Unicorns and glitter and taxidermy critters are just some of the things they like. They also enjoy 80s hair bands, Grizzly Adams and John Goodman, so if you think that's weird then you can take a hike. But the things they enjoy the most are making art and cracking jokes. So without further ado, here are your hosts. You've got your two artsy gals, your two artsy gals. Here are your two artsy gals. Hey everybody, this is Katie. And this is Sharon. And you are listening to the Two Artsy Gals podcast. Yay! Woo! So, we're going to talk about paintbrushes today. <laughs> Let's do it, Katie. Let's talk about paintbrushes. Well, I don't know about you, but <laughs> do you get fucking totally overwhelmed? You are being so hilarious right now. I wish <laughs> that the listeners could see you. Did you just lay down on your stomach on a bed? Like, I feel like we're in fucking high school and we're gossiping. I did. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> Dude, now I feel like I, I sh- only had Skype in high school, Katie. <laughs> I know. Oh, that's kind of a good thing because I would have gotten in big trouble for yeah, bad things. Do. But so oh. I feel like I should whisper now that we're sharing. I feel like we're sharing secrets. But <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I don't know about you, but I get kind of overwhelmed in the paintbrush aisle. At, like, I do too. At Blick or even Joanne's, but Blick is like insane. Ridiculous. Like there's all of these brushes and my brain just goes, <gasps> what am I going to do? Oh. I don't know what to do. Like, I don't Can know I what's, you? what? Tell me things. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my grandma was a painter. She was an oil painter uh-huh. and she did watercolor. I always would look at her paintbrushes and she had the fan paintbrush. And I would I just rub those. it on my face. I knew it was so soft. That. And I never really knew what it was. So I'd always be like, paint something with it. Like, show me what you're painting with it. Or, and I always wanted to get that paintbrush, but I never knew what I'd do with it. Because really, like, for watercolor, because I mostly watercolor, the, I didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> but I always wanted one. I have one, and I never use it. Do you just do you just rub it on your face? I do actually. It's one of the ones that I do. Rub- I have a few that I like to rub on my face. I have some favorite paintbrushes that are so funny. My friend Amy came up here a couple years ago, and she was going to give me a lesson, an oil painting lesson. And I went and got my paintbrushes, some of my paintbrushes, and I she picked through them. And she's like, "This is your favorite paintbrush, isn't it?" And I said, "How can you tell?" And she goes, "Because you can't you can't see the brand, you can't see what color." It used to be like the wooden handle. You, oh. It's so covered in like old paint and old glue and just all kinds of crazy. I actually need to replace it because it's getting kind of brittle. But I love that fucking paintbrush. Oh, but part of it, it, I that's one that I used to rub on my face. Oh yeah, <laughs> when I was th- I I do that when I think. Uh huh. Actually, I have to be careful because I'm in such a habit. I like to rub them on my chin when I'm thinking about what I'm painting, and sometimes I forget and I paint my chin. <laughs> like I forget I have paint in my brush and so I just smear it around on my chin it's and like, then I'm like, oh, oh shit. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's so funny. I can't tell you how many times my husband's come home and went, what are you doing? Are you painting with your chin? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a new thing. Fuck off. Well, just to get us started. So we know what we're referencing. I'm going to go over really quickly the anatomy of a paintbrush. Because parts have names. I love it when you say that. Do we? <laughs> so, of course, Do there's the handle. Duh. Everybody knows that. <laughs> and then you have, now, my husband tells me that I've been pronouncing this wrong. It's called a ferrule. And mm-hmm. it is a little crimpy thing that holds the bristles, attaches the bristles to the handle. So then, I don't even know any of the parts of these except for the, the handle. Well, that's just like bristles. the bristles. Now, the bristles are divided into three sections. So the mm-hmm. he- the heel of the bristles are what's next to the ferrule. Okay. And then there's the belly, which is the middle section of the bristles. And wow. the, the toe or the tip, uh-huh. but that's the top of your bristles. Okay. So that's only important because in when we describe some some of these brushes, I'm going to refer to certain parts 
Okay. The brush. So, and I, full confession here, I am, again, using the our, uh, the Artist Handbook by Ray Smith. It's the only textbook I kept from graphic design school, and I fucking love this book. <laughs> I'll link, I've linked it before, I'll link it again, because I think every, I think that everybody, every artist should have this on their bookshelf. It's awesome. So a lot of the information that I got, like the technical terms of the information I got, I got from this. Oh, but, awesome. Okay. But this book is what made buying paintbrushes less overwhelming for me. Mm-hmm. So let's first, let's talk about soft hair bristle brush, soft hair versus bristle brushes. And natural hair versus synthetic brushes. Okay. I don't know why I was doing that voice. Oh, I like it. You're getting all Max Hedger me. But we're just going to pretend that it didn't happen. I know. You kind of were too, but we'll just pretend. Yeah. We're just going to pretend. And that means that the audience needs to pretend as well. Soft hair brushes are mostly used for watercolor because they're soft. They hold a lot of, they can hold a lot of thin paint like a lot of washes Mm -hmm. and they're soft. They're the ones that you always want to rub on your face. They work great for, like I said, watercolor and uh, precision work and other types of paint. Like when you want a really thin brush to do like a really fine job, a soft hair brush also is probably a better bet. And then bristle brushes are stiffer, obviously stiffer brushes with more coarse hair in them. And they're better for things like oil and acrylics there. They hold, Uh, larger amounts of thicker paints and they're good for covering a lot of area uniformly and they also are preferred for like stencil work or stippling or stuff like that oh yeah i like those big fat round where you pound the paint onto the yeah she's (laughs) making such an angry face right now and it's awesome you crack me up (laughs) you're being funny tonight lady (laughs) have you been drinking no damn we need to do another drinking episode. <laughs> yeah. And then you have the synthetic brushes versus natural brushes. So those are the, the two kinds of brushes that you're going to be working with are soft hair brushes and bristle brushes. There are other brushes within those categories. But and then of those, you can get synthetic brushes and natural hair brushes. Obviously, natural hair brushes are going to be way more expensive than synthetic brushes. Are those like the sable hair brushes? Yeah, they have like sable, which I don't even know what the fuck a sable martin is, but it is made from the tail hairs of a sable martin. uh, Oh, I thought it was a fox. Maybe it is a kind of fox. No. But it's made from the tail hairs of an animal called the sable martin. I should probably have looked that up, but you know. Well, now you got to put a picture of it on. I am going to find a picture and say... Every time you use a Sable Hair Martin brush, think of this face. <laughs> That's awful. Oh, I should have screenshotted that face. <laughs> you can put a picture of me next to it going. Okay. Well, you have to scre- You have to text me a picture of you doing that because I'm okay. totally holding you to that. <laughs> um, so there's also Squirrel is used and Squirrel is cheaper than Saber, but it's not as great for tapered brushes. But it's still really super soft. Um, and then you have like the hog bristle brushes, which would be for obviously for bristle brushes. The hog hair is like, I don't know. We always had boar's hair hair brushes when we were little. Like my mom, yeah. my grandma bought them from the Fuller Brush Man. Oh. <laughs> he used to come to our house and we always had boar's bristle brushes. So they're not always quite that heavy, but yeah, they're very stiff. Also, sometimes you use ox hair and uh goat hair can also be used goat hair is used a lot in um when i was reading i i saw something saying that they're used a lot in calligraphy brushes like the chinese brushes oh yeah like the long Mm -hmm. one thing you should know though is that if you see a paintbrush that says camel hair it is not camel Mm -hmm. hair because camel hair is really woolly and curly And it would absolutely not work in a paintbrush. So it's something else. It says it's often pony hair. They use pony hair. And it's uh, smooth, but it doesn't come to a point where, well, most of your brushes will actually say what they are. You know, like they'll say sable or squirrel or whatever. 
Oh, yeah, this is saying um, poly hair, so it's like not, yeah, it's not camel hair. Okay. Right. What, what okay. the hell is poly yeah. hair? Uh, probably like a polysynthetic or Oh, I was thinking or... poly, poly, poly. Like, what kind of animal would that come off of? My brain it's was a, thinking. It's from a parrot. A poly want a cracker? That's <laughs> actually where my brain went, but I was like, wait, parrots have feathers. So then, on the other hand, you have synthetic brushes, which are a more affordable alter- alternative most of the time for people. And anymore, they're made so well. They're a, the only real disadvantage to them, I think, is that they don't last as long as natural yeah. hair brushes. And they, no matter what you do and no matter how well you wash them, brushes that you use for acrylic or oil paint are going to get a buildup of paint in the heel of the bristles, mm-hmm. which will make your, when it dries, it makes your bristles splay out. Yeah. And it makes the brush stiff. And you're just going to have to replace them more often. That's all. Mm -hmm. And I do, I tend to invest a little bit more money and buy sable brushes or natural hair brushes for real specific things like, like my spotter brushes, like the real fine Mm -hmm. ones that are going to, that I need to be very precision and are going to wear out really fast. Mm -hmm. I tend to spend a little bit more money and justify it. But when you're buying those little spotter brushes, they're not that much. Right. Even if you're buying natural hair. And then I, most of my brushes are synthetic though. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of something that goes along with your, with your skill level in painting and also like the level of money you're making from being an artist. Like if you're making Mm -hmm. good money selling your paintings, you're going to be able to afford better brushes. So I think that more skilled artists probably would say, I would never use a synthetic brush or, you know what I mean. But Right, exactly. And just depends yeah, on the kind of painter you are. So now, mm-hmm. this is where it always gets fucking confusing. I don't get confused about natural hair versus synthetic hair because I go for what I can afford. Right. In the, the art supply store. But the shapes of the brushes is what always gets... So, like, you're just so fucking overwhelmed. Like, mm-hmm. I'm imagining myself right now standing in front of the display at Blick. Like, I don't know. I know that there isn't a Blick in every city. But when you, if you've never been in a Blick store or an art supply store that's that big, there's an entire aisle that's, like, the full length of the store. That oh, is yeah. their paint brushes. And they're, like... Little contain of the whole freaking aisle down both sides is full. Yeah, full of them, and I'm not even gonna get into the crazy specialty brushes like the splatter brushes and the the fan brushes and the this and the that and the like. It's insane. It really is. But so it we're is. just gonna stick to your basic brushes and your basic shapes and the jobs that those do. You have your rounds. They're called rounds. They'll probably say rounds on the section in the art supply store and rounds are attached to the handle with a round ferrule. So it's, it has not been smashed Mm -hmm. to hold the, the bristles in. It's a round ferrule. So the brush stays around. And within that, there are a lot of different shapes and there are soft hair rounds that come to a fine point. They're ones with longer bristles with an even finer point. They're like, if you've ever seen them for people that do um, car detailing, that paint pinstripes and stuff. Have you ever Mm. seen a pinstriping brush? They're crazy. (laughs) They're super thin and super long. And I'm amazed by people that can paint a straight line like that. It's nuts. Wow. So, and then you have round bristle brushes. You also have... The soccer hair rounds are good for like things like mops or wash brushes where you're washing a lot of color or you're mopping a lot of paint on. And the smaller mm-hmm. ones with that are soft with longer hair, like I said, are, are fine point, fine detail brushes. And then you have bristles, bristle brushes in both lengths that they would hold a lot of paint and maybe do a lot of background coverage or like we were talking earlier, the stippling brushes. And stuff like that. Oh, yeah. And stencil brushes. Those are round. And they would also Mm -hmm. be stiffer. So you have those. And then you have filberts. So filberts are kind of halfway between rounds and flats. They're made as rounds. So when they're put together, they have a round ferrule. And they're trimmed 
just like they're going to be a round brush, and then they smash them down and make the ferrule flat. So what that hmm. does is it gives okay. the filberts that kind of rounded off top that they all mm-hmm. have. So oh, and, okay. So and they're so they have a rounded toe, but they're flat everywhere else, and they're really good for bigger detailing work and painting up against uneven edges. As opposed to trying to do a straight line. Okay. I actually love filberts. My favorite paintbrush is a filbert. And I use it for doing larger detail areas. Like if I were painting a face and doing like the tone and coloring in a face or the shading around the eyes and the nose. That's what I use to do that. And then we have flats. So and a flat is made like a flat. It's, it's got a flat ferrule. And it's squared off the top. Flats, and what do you use those for? Well, they have different uses. So flats with the shortest bristles are called brights. And they are used for applying like short dabs of color or little bits of color. They just do like little dabs. And then they have longer flats. So they would have longer bristles and those are called one strokes. So they generally hold enough paint for one long, smooth stroke. So if you're doing a lot of background or you want to do like a, a horizon line, you would do that a lot. So an appointed flat with soft hair would hold a lot of paint when it's wet. And so that would often be used uh, and hold a nice edge when loading paint. So those are kind of used in watercolor a lot. Mm-hmm. So for making those softer edges. Do you have any more questions about the shapes? No, but like, what would the angled ones fall under? No, there's like ones that... Well, the angled ones are probably... They're flats. Oh, okay. They're flats and it's just kind of an, an, an angle. And I have a lot of those. I like those a lot because those are good for getting in, you know, making a nice edge and getting in corners right. and and stuff like that. And I actually looked to see if there was a name specifically for those and I didn't... I didn't really find one. So I, I guess they're just angled flats. Oh, Okay. And again, cool. I don't want to, like, I'm not going to get into, like, the all of the other fancy brush shapes because I don't know all of them. Like, it would be impossible to research mm-hmm. all of that. But these are just your basics. Like, when you walk in there, keep these, keep those in mind and keep what they do in mind. Mm-hmm. And you won't be, like, you won't feel quite as, oh, oh, my God, what am I doing in here with all these fucking paint brushes? Sometimes I just <laughs> want to sit down and cry. And then we have, like, we have, you know, sizes. Brushes come in zero, zero, being, like, the teeny tiniest to 16. So you just pick the size, mm-hmm. you know, for the job that you're doing. Obvi- you know, smaller right. brushes work better for more detail work. Handle lengths are kind of standard for the most part. Some artists, actually, they want a longer handle. And I'm sure you've seen, like, I think I maybe even seen Bob Ross do this. You, They tape... um their brushes to like a dowel to make the handle longer. Oh yeah. I've seen that done, but cause they're all pretty standard. Right. So, but in, it, that's an oh, Bob Ross. I miss Bob Ross. I actually watched a really yeah. awesome documentary about him on PBS. Really? Yeah. Because it was like their, their, their pledge weekend a couple weekends ago. And I was flipping through the channels and they were talking, I saw his picture and I was like, Bob Ross. And then I got sucked in and watched it. And he was a really interesting man. Really? That's Mm -hmm. awesome. He was really cool. He kind of revolutionized that whole, like, the whole, like, painting on public television thing or, like, on television. Like, he was kind of the first dude. Yeah. And he kind of made it up as he went along. So it was, it's kind of neat. Happy little trees. I know. Him and his happy little trees. Did you know that he permed his hair like that? Oh my god! Well, it was kind of that time frame dude, my that men un- would perm their hair. My uncle had a white dude fro in the eighties that he permed for a long time. Wow! We used to really make a lot of fun of him. Yeah. That's um, not very nice. Well, that's so funny. Oh my god! It was kind of hilarious, um, but it was the seventies and like late seventies, early eighties. I guess we all yeah. did. We all did weird okay. shit with our hair. So. <laughs> Let's not even go into like the late eighties, early nineties and our Aquanet bangs and no. big crazy fucking hair. No. Other than to just say that I had fucking the best mall bangs ever. Oh man. Did you have the Clackamas claw? Is that's that what, what it's called? Call it? Like all teased well, that's up what on we top? Called it. Oh yeah. I had like the huge waterfall. 
Oh, like, we're like up and over. Oh yeah, and I feel like, like up oh, and then nice. over. I had like the wings out to the side that feathered back, oh. and then like the big crazy tall bangs. It was pretty oh, nuts. nice. Wow. I also had forehead acne because I shellacked my fucking face with so much Aquanet. Oh yeah. Well, like, that went along with yeah the eighties hairdo. I know. My doctor said, if you stop using so much hairspray, your acne will go away. And he was totally right. But I didn't stop using it. I just made like a shield of my hands. Like I, I didn't get it on my face. So. Oh, that's hilarious. Because you can't give One up your t- I remember hairdo. Being, what? You can't give up your fucking hairdo. Come on. I know. I remember one time my hair, my bangs were really big and I was I remember I was like some camping trip and it was raining so hard and I, my eyes were burning from how much Aquanet was washing oh into my, my eyes. That's awful. That awesome. <laughs> we used to go out to, I, okay, I was not, I was a bad girl in high school and we went out and smoked at the bleachers. Like the rest of uh-huh. the school called me and my friends that hung out there, like all the stoner kids and the smokers were the bleacher creatures. <laughs> And we would go outside and we would get, our hair would get wet and we would come in through the locker room and use the hand dryers to blow dry and reapply. Oh my God. Aquanet. So we would have to, we had to put out our cigarette early enough to have time to fix our fucking hair again before going back to class. <laughs> That's hilarious. You can see why I didn't have very much time for homework. <laughs> <laughs> you were, yeah. I was very busy with my hair. <laughs> You could have kept paintbrushes in there. I totally could have. Nice, nice steering us back on track. <laughs> <laughs> and actually... All the boss, that whole conversation thing. <laughs> so, we should talk about cleaning hair... Or hairbrushes? Well, no, let's not talk about that, because you don't even want to look at my hairbrush. Let's talk about cleaning paintbrushes. <laughs> Which is really important. I actually really like, it's called, what I use is called Master's Brush and Brush Cleaner and Preserver. And it's a little cake and it comes in a mm-hmm. little container and I, I'll link it on, on our blog. Love that stuff too. I fucking love it. Like, yeah, when it, I just, it, it works. It works awesome and it leaves your brushes, it does, your, your brushes don't dry out. It leaves them yeah. nice and, um, condition because it's a preserver and it works for all it works for oil acrylic anything like that i think with oil paints you probably have to do a considerable amount of rinsing with turpentine and stuff like that yeah i don't do oils i don't either i have some turpenoid it's like a it's an uh like an orange based uh Mm -hmm. alternative to turpentine but i don't necessarily think that it works as well as as the turpentine and linseed oil but i'm not a real I think I've maybe painted one thing with oil paints in my lifetime. So I use acrylics and watercolor too. There you go. I recommend the Masters Brush Cleaner and Preserver, especially if you're using th- synthetic brushes, because I feel like it extends the life of them quite mm-hmm. a bit. And they also make a fucking awesome bar soap for your washing your hands that gets paint off acrylic paint off your hands. Whoa. Awesome. It's really good. And it, it really takes up because I'm, I constantly have paint on my hands. Yeah. But that, it helps get it off. Cause you know, every once in a while you have to go somewhere nice and you don't want to have paint on your hands. Like normal. I don't care. Oh, if weird. The, I don't care if the person checking me out at the grocery store sees paint on my hands, but you know, once in yeah. a while I go out to dinner with my husband or something. <laughs> I want to look nice. You're so fancy. I am so fancy. I put pants, on my pants. I put on my push-up bra. I don't want to have like eh. awesome cleavage and paint on my hands. You, would just... you get your push-up bra, your spanks, and your pretty hands. Exactly. And you take your fancy pants out. You know what my mom calls spanks? Her her sausage casing. Oh God, they are. I know, dude. They're totally like a sausage casing. They're after I had. Oh my God! After I had my second child. I had to go to a wedding, and I went to go try some of those on, and it just moved everything around. It just made me feel worse because they just squished all my bits and pieces 
around in all the wrong places <laughs> after, like, just having a baby. That's why I wear low-cut dresses. Because <laughs> I have a giant rack. And if you wear a good push-up <laughs> bra and a low-cut dress, this is I call it my look up here, not down here. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody gets past my giant cleavage. <laughs> To look at the fucking, my lumpy ass or my big belly, so. <laughs> I don't have that option. Well, you should get some of those little chicken cutlets, the chicken breast cutlets that push your boobs, that make your boobies look bigger. Just get some cutlets? <laughs> yeah, that's what I call them. They look like little chicken breast cutlets. They're little jelly what things. Are you talking about? It's, all, it's weird to, <laughs> to wear those, like the push up bra, like the cutlets bigger than my boob. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, we're talking about it's like boobs. So <laughs> 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 oh my god. <laughs> I get these big bras and I don't know why. I don't know why they have like pusher uppers in them. Like they have these like they're blow up. <laughs> Like, like, why I'm like, that? what do they want me to fucking choke to death on my tits? Like, do they really want them under my, like, encroaching on my neck? <laughs> but I was doing laundry one day, and I have to take those out before I wash them. And I handed my son, my son was probably like 10, and I asked him to carry the laundry basket up the stairs, and he goes, what are these? And he took them out. He had one in each hand and he was squeezing them. And I go, uh, let's go in mommy's bra. And he's like, what? Why? Oh my God. And he like threw them down. And <laughs> this horrifying look on his face. Like, I just touched something that was on my mom's boobs. <laughs> Quickly, you'd gotten eight years prior. Yes. <laughs> He's totally scarred for life. <sighs> <sighs> Bras are weird. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Why is this so funny? I hope everybody else thinks this is as funny as we think it is. I have no idea. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that is not helping. <laughs> oh no. I got the wheezy old man. <laughs> <laughs> my belly hurts. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, okay. Paint brushes. Paint brushes. <laughs> Let's talk about paint brushes and what not to do to your paint brushes. How to care for your paint brushes. So I'm really bad about this, and I'm actually probably not anyone that should be up here lecturing people on how to treat their paint brushes. So I will just tell you not to do what I do. So don't leave your paintbrushes sitting in water for like a week. Uh, yeah, that would be me. Totally and then the water evaporates, and you just have a bin of paintbrushes. Yeah, brushes. it's all dried, and you have to like peel it off the bottom of the container that it was in, and then it will like never paint again. You, it's like a J. <laughs> maybe like maybe you can put it in your bra, and it'll flatten it out. <laughs> Dude, I've I've warmed up Fimo clay under my boob before <laughs> because it's so hard. Well, like Helen says, your boobs are magical. They are, they are. I just stick them under there to warm it up. Maybe they'll iron out a brush too. You never know. <laughs> but <clears throat> I used to work with the lady that would stick the vaccines to warm them up in her bra. <laughs> she pull vaccines out of her bra. That could be a good thing or a bad thing. Well, it's all sanitary. The cap wasn't off yet. No, no, no. I mean, like, if a client saw it, like, you know, someone, a patient saw them, like, I could see yeah. dudes that would be like, hey, boob vaccines, rad! <laughs> <laughs> or my son might be like, ah, boob vaccines! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this week it's boob vaccines. Last week it was yarn vaginas. And 
whatever else we did. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> so yeah. Don't leave them in water. Because for obvious reasons. And don't let the paint dry on them. Especially if it's if it's acrylic paint. You you're throwing the fucking paint paintbrush away. Yeah. There's no way to come back from that being dried on Mm-mm. There's not. I mean, you might be able to save, like, a brush if you did that in oil paint. Maybe. But not yeah. with, with acrylic paint. It's done. You're just throwing it away. <clears throat> Don't ever put them away wet. You want your brushes to be completely dry before you put them away. Store them with the handles down. So you don't want to... Duh. I store mine in mason jars. Mm-hmm. Like, different different brushes for different things so don't pack them in too tight you want the brushes to not be like squished yeah or touching each other and i store them obviously handles down because if you stored them with brushes down it would ruin the whole thing is to not oh. smash the bristles yeah so and also i i was reading this, something saying not to store them in bright light light or places oh. subject to drastic temperature change that makes sense. Yeah, because I think the light probably dries out the bristles. And, like, mm-hmm. you've seen plastic, and or especially the synthetic ones. You've seen what happens yeah. with plastic in the sunshine or nylon in the sun. But yeah. But also frequent temperature changes, if you have wooden-handled brushes, makes the wood swell and shrink and mm-hmm. swell and shrink. So yeah, there's that. And here's something that people don't know or think of. So if you are an artist that works in watercolor and acrylic, and oils, or even more than one, you want a different set of brushes for Mm -hmm. a different medium. You want your watercolor brushes to only be your watercolor brushes. And your... Exactly. Acrylic paints are hard on paint brushes. Like, it's a tough paint that lasts a long time, Mm -hmm. and so you want only... You just want your brushes to be acrylic brushes, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And especially with oil painting... Like, those brushes need to be specially conditioned, and they have oils in them that just won't wash out, that will affect other paints. So, just have a separate set of brushes in general. And that's it. That's all I got to say about brushes. I feel like maybe our boob conversation was more interesting than this episode topic. But, But hopefully, hopefully, it'll help some of our listeners not be overwhelmed when they look at the millions of brushes yeah in the store or they'll know a little bit more like oh hey that's what this brush does right and i also want to say i don't strictly use like i know what all the shapes and stuff are for and what their jobs are now but i still have brushes that i just use for certain things yeah as always these are never rules like you have to use your brushes like this yeah and that's it's that. all good yeah so we actually have a listener mail. Yay! I'm going to open it up really quick. This is not what I'm looking for, Sharon. This is not the email you're looking for. It's totally not the email I'm looking for. There we go. Okay. We had an email from Fran. And Fran had some awesome information for us. She said, hey, I just found your podcast. Before I forget, Artomatic is that how they spell that? Is nationwide. I ran into their website a long time ago, but I had forgotten about it. She was saying she needed to go find the website again and see if there's anywhere close to where she lives, way out in the sticks, and she's in Snohomish, Washington. So, oh, that's close to me. Yeah. So thank you so much, Fran, for that. And I actually did a little bit of research, and it is called Artomat, not Artomatic. And it is nationwide, and I will link their website. And you can go on their website and look for, there are three in Oregon. One is in the radio room. One is um, in Eugene at, uh, I think, Lynn Community College campus. And then there's another one in Portland on another college campus. But cool. you can look. There are some up, actually, in your end of Washington. I think there are only a couple states that don't have them. I was looking at the map. Cool. So there are only a couple, but you can also get your art. She was pointed out that you can, um, there's a submission process to get your art put in 
the automatic mm-hmm. machines. Thank you very much for that, Fran. And she also said that on the eighth, uh, the artist trading card concert controversy that we talked about last week, that um, she thinks one way the cards are sold are those that are traded are differentiated is by name. So actually, I mentioned on our blog post last week afterwards, and I should have brought it up. I just kind of forgot to mention it in the podcast. So they're called ACEOs. And it's called Artist Cards, Editions, and Originals. And so that is, Fran is correct. That is um, the way that some artists choose to differentiate so that they're not getting called on selling ATCs, like artist trading cards. So oh, cool. They do that. She said, she said, I know it doesn't satisfy everyone, but some people will never be satisfied. So it just occurred to me that you probably all knew that, but I wanted to keep it simple for those who hadn't heard about ATCs at all. Thank you for pointing that out. And I actually meant to say something last week and I didn't, um, but that was a good thing for people to know. And then she said, thanks for a great podcast from a new listener who's going back to listen to the back episodes from Fran. And I, awesome. I hope that she enjoys our back episodes. Because we have quite a yeah, few of them now. Thanks, Fran. So, yeah, thank you for that. And thank and I will link the um, Artomat website in the notes for this show. That's pretty exciting. I think it's really neat, and I think it's kind of neat to go figure out. Like, I kind of want to go to every every state that has them and get a piece of art from each one. Yeah, that would be awesome. I mean, that would be kind of neat. It would take me a long <laughs> time, but that also kind of goes along with my um, goal to visit every state in this nation. There you go. At some point. So I could do that. But anyway, if any of you want to send us an email, if you have questions about this episode or comments about this episode or questions about any other episode or questions about, I don't know, anything or comments about chicken cutlet bra lifter things or <laughs> anything like that, you can email us at two artsygals at gmail.com. And of course, go check out our blog because we have episode notes for every episode that we do with all the links and sometimes pictures of stuff that we're talking about. And that is two artsygals.wordpress.com. And you can subscribe to us on Stitcher and on iTunes. So go do that. And you can totally leave us awesome feedback because that would be really cool. So I think that's everything, Sharon. Yeah, I think so. Alrighty, well, until next week, make some cool shit. Make some cool shit, yo! Yo. Alright, bye!